Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a manga review of chapter 932, The Shogun and The Courtesan. So this week we have a fairly condensed chapter, very much focusing on the titular characters of Orochi and Komurasaki. And that's always a bit of a tough ask in One Piece because as an audience, we're very invested in the doings of our protagonists. So when we have a week like this, where there is no involvement from characters such as Luffy, Zoro or Sanji, people are liable to complain at great length. I'm not one of them though. I thought this chapter was really cool and very necessary because we really need to get a move on in regards to building the Wano exclusive characters. So the time here was greatly appreciated, particularly in regards to Orochi. I mean, during this chapter, he was a dick as we already know, but for all his flaws, he does need to be given credit for being seemingly the only character on the antagonistic side of Wano to be correctly anticipating what's to come, even potentially seeing it as a threat to Kaido. That at the very least is a one up on characters like Spandam right there. Orochi doesn't seem to be acting like an overly confident sack of crap. Crap. He's very aware of the danger he might be in, even if he's coming to the wrong conclusion about exactly why. Of course, the other benefit his character has is his abilities, which were finally put on full display this week in a wonderful two-page spread where he sprouted what looked like eight Momonoskes on steroids. The heads all look like they have different personalities as well, which is very good fun. One of them in the top right of the page actually reminds me a lot of Drunk Kaido, but this is one of those situations where I just need to stop and appreciate Oda's quirky details. In most other series, a creature like this would be fairly fearsome looking, but entirely boring because all of the heads would be near complete replicas of one another. But in One Piece, we can't have that kind of rubbish, no. Every head must have its own personality and motives. You know, like how there's a couple near the foreground of the spread that look curious, while there's a couple that look varying degrees of fearsome, and there's even that one in the back raising its head into the air, looking wildly arrogant, like, huh, yeah, I'm a dragon, what you gonna do about it? I mean, what we have on display here is probably a full spectrum of Orochi's personality manifesting itself. And it'll be really interesting to see if he has full control over all of them, or if it's more of a smile fruit situation where they function very much independently of the user. Whatever the case, it looks as if Orochi is fairly weak in the grand scheme of things, having been slapped by Komurasaki so easily. Although who knows, maybe Komurasaki is an absolute powerhouse, but I doubt it. It's a shame though, because it was quite cool to see Orochi take out his sword and jump into combat, even if it was to cut down a young child. It just made me think for a second that there might, there just might be a bit more to him, but that was quickly dispelled. At this stage, I feel like he's being set up more as an opponent for Momonosuke to overcome, which would make some nice narrative sense, taking down the man who was seemingly instrumental in the slaughter of the Kozuki clan. It really is Momonosuke's justice to acquire more than anybody else's, and Orochi is actually a decent opponent for him. In comparison to Momonosuke, Orochi is quite overwhelming, almost Kaido levels of overwhelming compared to Luffy. Plus we see him training a lot, so he's going to take action somewhere, and it just makes the most sense for the future Shogun to defeat the current Shogun. As for Komurasaki, she's developed a fair bit here, primarily in her claim of being the daughter of a samurai. So the idea that she is actually Hiyori is gaining a lot of traction now. And actually there was a panel of Komurasaki shown while Orochi was talking about Momonosuke, where she looked quite sullen and reflective. Like it wasn't the apathy you'd expect from what we've been told about the character. There's definitely a sympathetic connection to the Kozuki clan. And yeah, I don't see a convincing scenario playing out where she does not turn out to be Hiyori. Although Oda can and probably will prove me wrong. The other really interesting thing is that Komurasaki wears a mask to play the shaman essentially revealing that Komurasaki is our ever mysterious figure, you know, the one who was playing the shamisen at the beginning and the end of the first act of Wano. So there is a huge degree of importance being placed on Komurasaki in this arc, which seems like the focus our typical royal characters receive. As for why she wears the mask though, that's an intriguing discussion. And I think it may be something that is revealed through whatever eventual flashback we get. For example, if Komurasaki is Hiyori, then perhaps she is playing a song taught to her by her mother Toki, but she is unable to play it without thinking of her mother, which causes her to burst into tears. Very unbecoming of a court and thus she needs to wear a mask to perform. You know, something along those lines. It's just a really random addition otherwise, and I don't know why it would have been specifically flagged by Oda through dialogue if it wasn't going to be some tragic character building moment. Something that we'll all look back on when rereading the arc and go, oh. But going back to that panel of Komurasaki when Momonosuke was being discussed, right next to it is an identically sized panel of Robin also listening, and wow, it just makes it really clear how similar those character designs are, at least in their faces anyway. It probably wouldn't be so much of an issue if Robin was dressed in her regular outfits, but as a geisha, she and Komurasaki are doppelgangers. I think it's a real shame that Oda couldn't do just a little bit more to make Komurasaki's aesthetics more unique, and it stands out throughout the whole chapter because Robin is the only straw hat of any real focus here, so we're constantly cutting from Robin to Komurasaki and then back to Robin, and yeah, it's just classic Oda female designs is what it is. We either get an army clone or a Robin clone. In this arc, it's a Robin clone. 
Speaking of Robin clones though, Robin quite cleverly states that she is the witching hour boy to the Oniwa Banshu. It doesn't work, but it's better than anything I would have thought up. And by the end of the chapter, she is caught by them again. In fact, by the end of the chapter, everything is in utter chaos. Very much in need of some sort of strong presence to interrupt or for the Shogun to be alerted to some sort of highly concerning matter that's happened elsewhere. Otherwise, just like Kyoshira said, there's going to be a bloodbath. Speaking of that guy though, he continues to grow on me quite a bit. I really enjoyed the look on his face when Orochi interrupted his conversation. He just looks so sick of Orochi's shit. And we know that Kyoshiro is the real deal. He is going to be a beast in combat. It's still pretty hard to place his allegiance though, primarily because of the whole Komurasaki thing. Because get this, if Komurasaki is Hiyori, then I'd find it really hard to believe that Kyoshiro doesn't know that. In which case he would seem like a likely future ally. And that's not something I'm sure I want. I like his mischievous and downright evil aura. He is the lurking antagonist this arc needs right now. And the way this chapter ends, the very last panel actually, is him about to draw his sword. And that gave me chills because I really want to see what he's capable of, although I don't think we're going to get it right now. But that pretty much does it for chapter 932. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.